I hope you're all doing well. Um, I've been sick for the last week, so I'm not going to be able to do a whole lot of talking today. Um, I was hoping that Dr. DeVries would be on to talk about the meetings in Washington, D.C. the last week, but I don't know if she's able to be on. Um, and Dr. Price is taking care of a family emergency, so he's not going to be on either. But both of them have been involved in, in attending several meetings in Washington, D.C. in the last week. Uh, I was hoping to have them give updates, but um, if they jump on, we can have them do that. Um, meanwhile, um, maybe we can just talk about where existing projects are and kind of see, how, see how things are going. Angel, do you want to talk about your current projects? I know you were trying to organize things. Can you hear me there? Okay, um, so um, I've been working on the on the draft for the um, for the proposal for the intuitive surgical grant. Uh, actually, um, Hafsa and I met last week and discussed a few ideas for the for the draft. Um, I am still working on getting some information for that, uh, for the budget part. Actually, Hafsa gave me some ideas on how to structure the budget. Um, but I would like to uh, discuss with Dr. Price um, before uh, looking into some things, because I, I already have like the items that I have to look for, but I would like to, uh, I would like him to tell me like how many surgical boxes should I um budget for or how many people should be in every trip um and that that kind of stuff more the the quantity of each item um summary. can you give a summary of your uh of your proposal sorry uh i couldn't hear that very well she said could you give a summary of our proposal yes uh, so right now, the let me close this. So right now we have. Um, let me show my screen. I think I, I don't know if I have already showed this to you, um, but we have like the general overview of the grant. What is it that they uh, are asking for and what this grant is about? And I just uh, copied and pasted all the, the, uh, questions they ask in the submission site and started answering them here and actually I went uh, through this with uh, Hafsa last last week um, they are basically asking how the the training course works and uh, for which healthcare participants it's designed for and basically all the the background information about mm -hmm. this project and uh, yes. was, so basically you're saying that you're applying for a thirty thousand dollar grant to do more laparoscopic training in cambodia is that right yes but no um it, it's uh sixty five thousand, and it's not uh specific for cambodia what we okay. want to do is uh that this will also work for other sites in the future because all the trainings and all the lectures that we have we want to make them available through the Think Thinkific site or even uh, other site in, in the future, maybe. So that's another thing that I've been doing is um, having a backup for all the audios of the Thinkific lectures, because now we have um, everything in uh, with voiceovers for the slides, um, with instructions for the course and everything so that it can be uh, self-sustained training in, in case they want to go back and review the lectures for all the skills, the laparoscopic training skills, they can go back and review them. Um, and the idea is that it would not only work for Cambodia, but in case they want to use it also for Hawassa in Ethiopia and uh, in 
other places in the future they could use it for that um so, so yeah, that's is this the, grant the to cre- is this grant to create that platform because i thought you already have that platform so we have that platform but well we we are currently using thinkific but um that's one thing that they want it to be in an open source i don't know if they if they would be okay if we use thinkific or if they provide their own uh platform i think they will they would like request all the material and publish it themselves but um yeah that's basically the thing it's an educational uh tool that they want to generate for healthcare workers and um, in this case surgeons Um, I don't know if there are any questions from anyone. Yeah, I guess I, I guess I don't understand what it is you're asking for money for because you already have created your online platform. So um, the money is is for uh, all the expenses related to to the project and going to the actual places and teaching the in person course. Um, okay. But don't you already have a grant for the Cambodia project to do that? We have the support from the LDS Church, but okay. uh, like if if we want to expand that and get even more materials and everything, that that's where we could use this for. Okay, so this is for additional. And also, materials. yes, and also uh, having the the course in Thinkific um, has a certain costs every year. I I don't know exactly wh- how much it is, but I know there is a cost associated with having all the courses um there so that could also be in the budget okay so is this taking the content and expanding it to a different site or just buying materials for the the existing sites so uh both of them so it's for for having the content available and even expand the content and also for getting more materials for the different sites because right now the, the funding that we have right now uh, for for is specific for Cambodia, if I'm not if I'm not mistaken, and this would be like this could give us funds for other sites as well. So, um, because I, I I spoke with Mackenzie mean, during the week and sorry. yeah. So what do you mean by that? What do you mean is give funds for other sites? Like to go travel to other sites, or for them to to take the training, to do the training online, or get the equipment? Yes, exactly. For 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 example, if Mackenzie wanted to use uh, to buy equipment for the uh, minimal invasive course in in uh, Africa, they could use funds from this grant um, and use them in in Africa. And uh, even if they want to start another training site in the future, they could use them as well. Because we want this not to be specific to one site, but uh, be a tool that can be applicable in different sites. Okay. All right. Okay. Um, are there any other questions related to it? Yeah. So um, on the on the transplant side, um, we just finished today a report for the um, last year of the collaborations with Mongolia. Um, Dr. Rodriguez is going to review it today and we should be submitting that this week. Um, Let me find the report and I can share my screen. Um, I don't know um, because there there have been some changes. I I don't know if that grant is going to remain with the university or with Intermountain. I'm I'm not sure about that, but um, we are submitting a renewal for, for that grant. And uh, we are actually, I met earlier with Leaf today, and we uh, have some information that we need to collect from the Mongolian team because we have a manuscript almost um, ready for submission. Let me just find that manuscript. So um, this is the manuscript. Um, we are maybe going to change the title. Um, 
but um, we are going to submit to the Journal of Hepatology. And if it's not accepted there, we are going to try the World Journal of Surgery. And um, here we are describing all the collaborations we've been doing for the past year and all the, the uh, publications we've done, the academic advancements and the clinical uh, impact. We, are, we actually did a survey to measure the perception of the participants of this collaboration in how has this um, project improved in their hospital. And they said that this gave them new ideas for research projects, increase their knowledge and help them uh, take better decisions and provide better care for their patients, among other uh, benefits. Um, and also we are getting some information to give a first look at, at pediatric liver transplantation in Mongolia because there, uh, when we were there, we noticed that their uh, adult liver transplant program is really uh, growing and has been growing for the past 12 years, but uh, they have only performed uh, seven pediatric liver transplants. So that's where the focus is going to be from now on. Uh, and actually, one of the things that we want to do is um, we want to update this graph uh, that shows how they have been growing since uh, they started doing transplants in 2011 and compare it with uh, another emerging center here in the US uh, that has not had a mentoring um, program helping them uh, along the way and see um, how fast were they able to become independent and how fast uh, they reach uh, 100 transplants and 200 transplants. Um, just to mention a couple of things that we want to look at, uh, into. Um, Leaf is actually going to help me to get this data from the Mongolian team. Um, and um, yeah, that's uh, one part of this project. We, as, we, as I said, we want to, yes. How is this one different from the paper that you wrote for the first year results? So the first year results was just actually the, the report. This is uh, that we sent to the to the uh, TTS ILTS um, program directors, the the council deciding for uh, the grants, and we actually want to add more to it and publish it. So this is um, actually you, I think you suggested that we we did that. So this is the actual manuscript that we want to submit. So there are not two manuscripts. This is the the, the this is yes, this is the main yes. manuscript for this. Yeah, okay. correct. Yes, fantastic. Yeah, and why why are you submitting to journal of hepatology? Uh, because uh, Dr. Rodriguez spoke with Dr. Bura, and uh, she's she's one of the editors in uh, Journal of Hepatology, and she said that there's a specific section for global collaborations. Okay. and that we should try submitting there. So um, if it's not accepted, we would try a World Journal of Surgery or a Transplantation Journal. Okay. These are some other journals that I uh, yeah. reviewed, and I think those could be other options, but I think the main ones are these ones. Okay. Yes. That sounds good. Yeah, and on the... Um, Breast surgery side, uh, we are still waiting the, the manuscript that we submitted to um, the, the journal, of, um, journal of Surgical Research is still being uh, reviewed. Um, so we haven't heard back from, from that side. But uh, on the meantime, I'm uh, uploading everything, all the recommendations on PowerPoint presentations from the two more boards to um, Box so that uh, whoever takes on that project can have access to uh, all the databases and everything. Fantastic. Um, Leif, do you want to talk about any of your projects? Yeah, um, nothing too crazy. I, everything that Angel talked about is kind of what I've been working on with him. Um, the only other thing maybe is that we, we created or I guess finalized a like completed version of all of the slides from our online Thinkific course. 
into one large PDF, almost like a book. It's like a 200 page printable, you know, goes through everything that you need to know about basics of laparoscopy. And so that's kind of cool. That was originally built by, I believe, Sarah, but we just adapted it and added some more things to it and kind of changed some of the layout. So that's probably the only other thing I've been working on besides those. Could that be turned into an ebook? Like on it's, Amazon? it's just a PDF, but I'm sure that we could, frankly. I'm sure that we could try to adapt it so it's even more compatible in a, an online format because it's kind of big. It's like yeah. a 500 megabyte because yeah. all the pictures are pretty intensive. Yeah. So can you take a look at, at seeing what, what it would take to do that? Because yeah, of course. I wonder if having that kind of a resource might, might also be useful, um, kind of like a, a, an ACLS manual or an ATLS manual uh, might be useful, uh, especially for our, the, the, the learners around the world uh, to have uh, access to. I don't know how easy it would be to put something like that together, but. If you could take a look, that'd be great. Yeah, yeah I'm sure, it, honestly, it'd probably not be too bad just changing the formatting. Yeah, and that may be something to incorporate into that intuitive grant is to create a, an, an online ebook or something like that. That would also be accessible. That would be sort of a partner to all the uh, online um, programs. Yeah, it's a great idea. Thank you. Okay, awesome. Um, Dr. Rockwell, you haven't uh, you've you've recently come back from Ghana, and uh, wonder if you can talk a little bit about what the what our Ghanaian colleagues have asked you to um, to work on in terms of the burns and breast surgery fellowships, and what we can do to help with those things. Yeah. Um, so Pius Benarku is. Um, I think he, he has been for, for maybe a few months. The uh, Within the Ghana College of Physicians and Surgeons, there's a president and a rector, and then there's a vice president for surgery, vice president for medicine, and he's the vice president for surgery. Um, so he's trying to push these fellowships. Um, we, we have one in place for Han. I, I think when I was there, the week after I left, the colorectal team was there and with uh, Lian Wang and some people from Michigan. And I, I know Pius was there the first day and then I don't know, I think he sort of ceremonially said hello to everyone at the opening ceremonies and then he left. So he would like to establish uh, two breast fellowships, one for excision for general surgeons and one for reconstruction with plastic surgeons. The president of the Ghana College thinks it should all be one fellowship with one fellow and figures one surgeon should be able to excise breast cancer and reconstruct breast cancer. So we're sort of stuck. <laughs> uh, the previous president, who's John Nkrumah Mills, that I think Ray knows pretty well, was in favor of two fellowships. Now Sam Debra, who Ray also knows fairly well, I think, only wants to make it just one fellowship. So um, Do you think that it would be amenable to having two people doing that fellowship so that one can have a little bit more of one skew and the other can have a little bit more of the other skew, but really in, in name, they're both doing the same, the same fellowship? Uh, possible. So Pius, I, I wrote up a a fellowship proposal for sort of general surgery ex extirpation and plastic surgery reconstruction. Uh, we submitted both. Pius has now withdrawn the general surgery focused one um, and just has the plastic surgery one. I think it's submitted. Um, and I think Pius was thinking, well, let's see what happens with that one. Figuring that, I mean, that fellowship he could run through 
Confo Noche in Kumasi and, and sort of do it himself I mean, with the other plastic surgeons and he wouldn't need general surgery. And I think he got a little frustrated with sort of the thought that one surgeon should be able to do all breast cancer care. Um, so I think that's in the works. I, I have also written one up for burn surgery and I think Pius has put that one in. Um, and I've been talking to Gia about a trip there and Gia's trying to, she's trying to finalize their call schedule in the burn unit. And then we're hoping in the fall, uh, Jay Agarwal would like to go and then maybe Gia, Jay and I can all go and um, Jay would like to do breast reconstruction and Gia would do burns and plastic surgery does both. They said they can, they could accommodate both at the same time. And, and then Gia could see what it's like and whether she wants to participate more. Um, uh, what are, have you had a chance to talk to Elliot about, uh, Elliot Asare about that, um, the, the traveling fellowship that he's trying to assemble. But the reason I uh, am asking that is that we have some funds um, available for ed, like an education oriented um, activity uh, that would that can potentially align with your, uh, what they've asked, asked to put together, which is the breast burn fellowships. Yes. Um... So, and that would be to have yeah. someone from outside the U.S. come here. From Ghana, come here. Yes, yeah. Um, I have. I was going to answer back. Just it looked like he put that through for general surgery at GYN, and I was just wondering if there was a spot that didn't fill with general surgery at GYN, would a plastics person be an option? Yeah, I think that's the. Uh, we have some funds to be able to bring a Ghanaian surgeon here. And the question is, you know, if, if it's somebody who's focused on breast cancer surgery, then that, that works great, um, you know, with the recent trip for a colorectal. And, um, you know, it makes sense to have somebody from, from that, but that's a separate fellowship. So his thought is to not just have people learn the technical skills, but also have, see if they can learn some, um, participate in some of the, the um, courses, short courses here at Epi and Biostats and whatever else, like research so that they can get back and be able to do. Yeah, yeah. So if that's, um, but if you and Brett, you and Elliot uh, can work out a plan in a way that yep. syncs with what you and Pius have put to put forward to the Ghana, Ghana College of Physicians and Surgeons, um, but that involves them coming here for uh, you know, on a yearly basis, a fellow, one, one to two fellows a year um, for yep. whatever, six, eight weeks. That's, uh, that's funding that we have, um, that, we yeah. can, that we can do. And we can talk to the Gardner Holt families to see if we can get more funding over time. For yes. Okay. I'll, so, I'll talk to Elliot. They, I, I know the plastic surgeons, they, they would be very interested. Is, is you have anything, it's just yeah. Who pays for it? <laughs> that's that's their, exactly. Yeah, that, so uh, yeah, so that's what I'm saying. We have funds for it. So, um, and and so just discuss that and see how how to create something that Pius wants that, El, that, that you know the Elias yeah. and, and Kirsten want as well. Yeah, Make and uh, uh, I'll just tell you, Suda Pius is. He also asked if if you were ever going to come to Kumasi. Yeah, I'd love to. <laughs> I'd love to. <laughs> no, I, I know you're very, I mean, he's, I think he's thinking sort of a, a political visit. Yeah, gotcha. But I think that, you yeah. know, that's just sort of their tradition that. Yeah, okay. Um, yeah, well, maybe when, when you and, and Gia and Jay go, maybe I can go as well. It sort of depends yeah. when that is. But if you can keep me, yeah. keep me in, in the loop. I'll yeah, see. okay, we will do. Yeah, and I'll but, talk to Elliot about the other. Yeah, I have to go to Rwanda in July, August for a big implementation of uh, my project. But after that, things will calm down a little bit for my Rwanda work, uh, yeah. which has been taking a lot of time this year. So, yeah. 
Um, yeah. Yeah, after that, we can, we can do this. That would be great. Perfect. Um, great. And um, and uh, what is this? Edward Sutherland's coming here next month from uh, Ensign um, with the hopes of trying to have some meetings again to try to organize our plans for what what are all the different activities that are happening um, in Ghana. Oh, excellent. Yeah. With the different um, partners, you know, there may be yeah. many different partners in Ghana. And so how can we be coordinated? And I think that's an important question for us to keep in mind. Uh, so, uh, uh, when I was there, I went to the West African College of Surgeons. I mean, it was right across the border in Togo, and Edward was there. Actually, he, he, he and Ray had a very nice van and gave us all a ride one night back from a dinner. Excellent. <laughs> that was great. Excellent. Fantastic. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Um, and, and I may be able to talk a little bit about the colorectal team. Anna, I think you were involved in some of the emails at least. Do you want to give us an update on what happened with that? I, I was trying to get Dr. Huang to come to one of these meetings, but I think it's during his, his uh, OR time or something clinic time. I, I think it would be great for everybody to know what the colorectal project fellowship is all about. Yeah, um, I haven't gotten an actual full update since they've gotten back from their visit to Ghana. Unfortunately, I'm waiting on that. But essentially, um, we, uh, Dr. Gifty reached out to us about working with them to put together a colorectal fellowship in Ghana. Um, with a partnership with us and two other institutes here in the US. And the idea was that we would have our colorectal surgeons um, go out there and teach, and then also have their fellows come out and rotate with us at our institutions. Um, this lined up pretty well with us actually, because we just um, completed our colorectal fellowship. We'll have our first colorectal fellow starting this next academic year. Um, so the plan is, for our colorectal fellow to go rotate there and then their fellow to come rotate at our institute um, in the future. Right now, earlier today, we were just discussing having their surgeons join in on our tumor boards and um, education conferences. There were some questions about HIPAA and whatnot, but I think we've figured that out. So um, we're gonna have them included on those on a regular basis, as well as, like I said, the in-person rotations. Um, once I get more details, I can update at the next meeting that we have. That's fantastic. Thank you, Anna. Um, and and uh, we should see if Dr. Huang can give a, give a small update uh, about what their trip entailed and what their planning and what the curriculum is going to be, et cetera. Do you think you could talk to him about that? Yeah, I have already asked him to kind of give me like a report or a summary of the yeah. visit. Um, no, no, to have him come, like to join. Oh, us. to join our works in progress. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, yeah we, can, we can join for 15 minutes. It doesn't have to be like the entire hour. But okay. I think it'd be helpful. Cool. Yeah. Yep. Awesome. Fantastic. Um, Rachel, do you want to talk about your plans to go to Columbia? Oh, Rachel was able to. Rachel, can you hear us? Oh, there she is. Yeah, I can. Sorry. Um, <laughs> currently, it's a stressor, but um, sorry. We <laughs> June is just feeling really busy, but um, yeah, hoping to uh, facilitate the next step of our partnership with um, a couple of hospitals in Cali, in Colombia. Um, the plan for those who may not have heard about it um, is to have vascular and trauma acute care surgery fellows um, be able to do an exchange there um, in the coming year, years, hopefully. Um, and so the idea of this trip would be just kind of scouting out which hospitals um, have the best opportunities for us to be involved um, clinically. And then also some teaching um, opportunities. I think um, there's a lot of interest, at least on the part of Andres, who you guys probably met. Um, he was here before to um, sh sh share cases and talk about um, challenging things that we've seen and how we've um, handled them and, and maybe some other opportunities. So um, yeah, that's the plan for right now. I'm, I'm hoping to go for two or three weeks um, before I graduate. So. That's 
That's fantastic. Thank you, Rachel. <clears throat> uh, who else? I don't know if, um, yeah. Candace, I don't know if you have any updates or on anything that you're working on. Um, there is a, um, I think he's a medical student who's who's the, the partner of one of our incoming plastic surgery residents who's interested in global perioperative care and who uh -huh. would love to come, who's going to be here, I think, for the next year and would love to work with uh, any of the anesthesiologists here on projects. So if you have anything going on. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's that's great. Thanks. I'm, I'm kind of in between things. I... Um, I'm, I'm doing a master's of health policy and economics through the London School of Economics. I go back in June and I'm currently um, investigating a dissertation topic. Um, and so, <laughs> but, but haven't really landed on anything. I am working with the Royal College of Surgeons. They have a partnership with the London School of Economics for this global health policy unit. Um, trying to come up with something, but um, nothing quite finalized yet, or certainly not um, formulated enough to talk about. But when I land on something, I will pick your brain. <laughs> That's fantastic. Congratulations. It sounds like a great program. You should tell us a little bit about that. Um, that you know, that, that maybe the next opportunity. I don't know if you want to talk about it today, but. It'd be great to know more about you know, I'm happy to talk about it. It, it yeah. is a, um, it's basically a um, sort of, it's an, an executive master's program in health economics and policy. And it's basically um, mostly physicians, but not all through, from around the world. Um, and it, we go to London twice a year for two to three weeks and do all our in-person classes and then take our paper writing and, and um, literature review and everything home with us and, and do that throughout the year. It's a three-year program. I'm about two years into it and just in the last year embark on a dissertation. Um, it's, it's amazing. I mean, it's um, really high quality teaching from all the London School of Economic professors and um, you you get all of their resources and everything. They also just have a very different way of looking at medicine than we do typically. It's certainly more um, universal healthcare based, um, but it is uh, just provides a foundation into you know health policy subjects, economics, health economic subjects. Um, from more of a global perspective. And so um, I've, I've really enjoyed the program. A lot of people are going to the WHO and places like that um, after, after their, their work. Um, many people are transitioning careers outside of medicine and doing global health stuff, but some people are doing a lot of pharmaceutical stuff. And um, so it's good, but we have a cohort of about 40 people who stick together for the four years. And fun to have those people to bounce ideas off of and learn, learn from, you know, really representatives from throughout Africa and Asia and South America and Europe, of course. Um, and so that's it. But I, I can give more of a formal presentation uh, sometime. That sounds wonderful, especially once you um, start put, uh, coming up with a project. I think that'd be really great to think about, um, honestly, you know, honestly anesthesia and, and global health um, and perioperative. So wonderful, thank you so much. Um, Hafsa, do you have any updates? Have you been able to connect with Dr. Brownson um, or Dr. Burt or um, any any of the, the folks that have connected you to recently? Hafsa um, is newly joining us as, um, uh, I think the official title is Research Development Associate, but really essentially she's, um, oh, one of our program managers um, with more expertise in research than, uh, than uh, education, sort of Anna's counterpart in some ways. Um, uh, and uh, so she's gonna be helping us with creating new projects and enabling um, faculty and trainees to come up with new and more robust projects. So Hafsa, do you have anything you wanna add? So thank you for the introduction first. And yes, I am planning to meet Dr. Lindsay and um, on Monday. So that's the plan. And then we're gonna discuss because they mentioned that they are on the second phase. 
of their program in Ghana. So they want to see where I can fit in in their program. And in the meanwhile, Dr. Nunes in their Mon Mongolia project, um, they want to do the IRB application and they asked me if I can help them with that. So I will be working on that with them. Um, and then Dr. Sutherland, she's like, he's gonna see where I can fit in their project too. So yeah. I talked to him what else, so it's fine. Okay, so, and Dr. Sutherland, um, uh, Dr. Sutherland and uh, Xavier also be working together on this project. Yeah, he mentioned both mm -hmm. Sorry, my voice is just about gone. Um, uh, and do you wanna give a, I don't know if you know enough about Bronson or Burt's projects to give, a, a overview to the group about it? So I haven't like, I have the proposal I saw in the box. I'm gonna read over that. I haven't read it completely yet, uh, but yeah. So I just know that much that they are working in Ghana and it's gonna be in the second sort of like phase of that. So okay. All right. Sounds I was good. thinking to do it before their meet, like for meeting. So I have okay. everything fresh up. <laughs> okay, sounds good. Sounds good. Um, Hafsa just, just joined us in the last few weeks so she's coming up to speak um okay fantastic and then anna do you want to mention the 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 master's track real quick and the fact that we're recruiting now for the next cohort um and what that looks like sure so we've Most got to talk I, <laughs> so we've got a global health um innovation and technology track within our msci program here at the university of utah um we're getting close to closing out our first cohort and we're actively recruiting for our next cohort to start in fall, both international and domestic students. Um, we have funding opportunities, scholarships um, for both uh, international and domestic students. If there's any domestic students you can think of that are interested, the scholarship application deadline for a $10,000 scholarship to help their um, tuition is April 31st. It's the last day of April. Is there 31? 30th, April 30th. Um, if you, if you have any, um, people that are interested in doing the program, then feel free to give them my email or Suda's email and we'll answer any questions, um, that they may have. And it, that's our, uh, version of the sort of, um, modular um you know economics program at LSE. This is our modular innovation program uh in global health here at Utah that we've set up um, to try to leverage our expertise innovation and global health. Um, and so it's multi-departmental and uh and ideally interprofessional as well. Um, but uh we're still working on getting people from across professions mostly it's physicians at this point. So if anybody knows anybody interested uh, or would like to have people working with you on projects, uh, let us know. Okay. All right. I would talk more, but you can't hear me. Um, so I think we're going to wrap up for the day uh, today if nobody else has any, uh, has any other comments or input on anything else that they're working on. comments, suggestions. Okay. All right. Oh, wonderful. Thank you, everybody, for joining us. And we'll, we'll, we'll meet again next week. And next week, I think uh, Mo Sabai from, uh, from Neuro Rehab will talk a, a little bit about his collaboration in Morocco on uh, neurotrauma and rehab services. Um, so he'll be our internal guest speaker. I know we just need to confirm with him if you don't mind doing that. Okay, great. Okay, well, thank you, everybody, and see you next week. Have a wonderful week. Thank you.